Six years ago, I got married. And marriage is one of these events in life, a bit like birthdays, when everybody's nice with you, right? Uh-huh. Everybody gives you a lot of compliments. Everybody supports you. Everybody supports you. And this is kind of what I was expecting. But it did not turn out that way. To put things in perspective, 10 days before my wedding, I quit my job. It was a very important decision to bring into my life, an important change to bring into my life, but nobody understood it. Instead of support, I got a lot of questions. People did not understand why I was quitting that dream job. Many people thought I was silly and it was the most ridiculous ever decision to take. I was quitting a dream job, a job with lots of security, a job with a guaranteed future, a job with a lot of comfort. I even remember that because I was getting married, I could get paid for that. I could get a bonus for getting married. How cool is that? <laughs> That's how comfortable the job was. But I didn't take that bonus. Instead, I took the decision to quit my job 10 days before my wedding. Instead of compliments, I got questions from people like, Stella, why did you quit your job? Uh, it's because you're getting married to a very rich guy, therefore you don't need to work anymore. <laughs> Are you getting married and quitting your job because your husband just wants you to stay at home and have a lot of children? Or is it because your religion and your culture doesn't want you to work? I got other silly questions, but I would not talk to, about them here. But it's just to show you the misunderstanding that people had just because I decided to quit my job. See, you also have around you these people who don't get your decisions. They don't get why you want to instill change in your life. They don't get why somehow, from a day to another, you decide to go left instead of right. You have these people around you, all they do instead of supporting you, they're throwing that, these worries, that fear to you. And what happens? You take the fear and you don't do anything. You don't take action. And what you're doing, you're quitting on your dreams. And that is a pity. You hide behind the, the fear of change. But by the way, what is fear? I understood the definition of fear in 2003. And I'll tell you how. I come from a very beautiful country called the Central African Republic. It's in the center of Africa, beautiful country. But unfortunately, it's wounded by lots of civil wars since a couple of years. In 2003, my father was in the country. That's when I understood what fear really is. In 2003, I understood what fear really is, but I also understood what fear is not. Fear is not about quitting a job in order to pursue your dreams. Fear is not about letting go of a little bit of security in order to find greatness. Fear is not about letting go of a little bit of comfort in order to contribute to other people's lives. With my father in that country, I understood what fear really is. Fear is about not knowing if your loved one is in security. Fear is about not knowing if your loved one is safe. Fear is not knowing if your loved one, if you'll just see, if you'll ever see that person again. That's what fear really is. So what are you hiding behind? Are you hiding behind comfort? Are you hiding behind that security that you think 
that you have, and because of that, of you hiding, you're just letting your dreams fly away. Imagine if these are your dreams, if this is your life, and you could just take that fear and throw it away. Who would you impact? What would you accomplish? Would you be joyful today if you decide to throw away the fear that people are giving to you back? Now, if I'm here today, it's for a great reason. I want to share with you the three key principles which have allowed me along my way to transform the fear of change into a land of opportunities. Three key principles. So to go to the first principle, to illustrate it, I want to talk to you about something which happens every single time I start working either with organizations or with people. So in the beginning, everybody's very excited. Yes, we want to change, let's go for it. Ta -ta -ti -ta -ta -ta. And then when we need to take action, everybody disappears. Everybody goes to the coffee machine or whatever thing. Nobody's there anymore. And then when I ask, come on, what are you, what are you doing? Let's do this. No, but Stella, what you're asking us to do, it's too difficult. We've never done it this way. No, what you're asking is not doable. It's not in our DNA. It's not in our DNA. And I kept on having that excuse of the DNA thing that it actually got me curious to know more about the DNA. I'm not a biologist or anything, but I did my research and guess what? Our DNA does mutate. It does change, you know? Okay? It does mutate and when it does, what is beautiful about it is that somehow it creates new proteins in our body. I'm not an expert, but I did my research, okay? Don't blame me. So it creates new proteins in our body, which are there somehow to prepare us to the changes that we're going to have when there are new bacteria, for example. And what is great about it is that it doesn't only protect us, but it also protects the future generations. See, when you're changing, you're not only changing for you, but you're changing for all the other people who are behind you or to come. So it's not just about you. So why am I talking about the DNA, by the, the way? Because I, I mutated my own DNA. Now, it might, sound, it might sound crazy, but I'm going to explain you, okay? So what I did is I had a problem. Most of us, I think, are okay to say that one of the issues we have today is that we don't have enough time. But I had to find time in order to pursue my dreams. So what did I do? I mutated my DNA. How? Okay, I love to sleep. I could sleep a whole day. I love to sleep so much that a few years ago, one of my friends actually almost registered me to a sleeping contest. <laughs> That's how good I am. It was in Spain, so for the people who are interested, you can go and Google. So it's not about the contest here, but it's about I mutated my DNA because sleep is the thing I could not give up for, you know? But because I had the problem of time, I said, okay, I'm going to sleep a little less. And that's how I managed to say 52 days a year just by sleeping one hour less. One hour times seven by week, that's about seven hours. That's about fairly one day of work. There are 52 weeks. That's 52 days. That's how I found time. So when you mutate your DNA, you're able to find time. So what's the first principle here? You can take note of it. By taking little, little tiny actions, little decisions first, little tiny decisions, plus little tiny actions give you massive impact. So question, what is that little tiny decision that you're going to take today that is going to prove the put the massive impact that you're looking for. Because change doesn't need to be a revolution. It can be a step of little actions every single day. So to go to the second principle, we all know already that we need to take decision, actions every single day. Now, I don't know about you, but I would be worried if you told me, Stella, you have to do this every single day. I get bored, come on. So how did I manage to have that momentum, because here we need momentum. It's not only going to work one time. You have to do it every single day. So how did I manage to find momentum? I'm going to tell you the secret. 
So a few months ago, when I had my ever first international conference, 1,500 people, big room. I was scared to death. But at the end of the conference, there was a line of people who were lining up for a photo. So I said, okay, maybe my speech was not that bad. But aside from that line, there was a lady. She was just waiting for the photo line to end. And when I went to her, the first thing she told me, she said, Stella, thank you for your speech. Thank you for being here. Her name was Ingrid. I see Ingrid every single morning when I wake up, even though you know I love to sleep. <laughs> and I see Ingrid, but I see also the many other Ingrids that I met all over the world. When you find a purpose to what you're doing, it's not just about you. It's about the other people that you impact. It's about the way you contribute to other people's lives. So here is the second principle. When you want to find momentum, you need to hold on to a purpose. So find your purpose. What is the reason why you want to change things and hold on to it? Now, to go to the third principle, the third principle is, I would say, the most important one. Now, let's be clear about this. When you go towards change, I'm not going to lie to you. You are becoming a leader. You are becoming a leader of change who promises to himself, no matter what, you say to yourself, I will arrive to my goals. You make a promise to yourself. And talking about leadership and promises, it reminds me of a, an international conference in Los Angeles where I actually shared the stage with Steve Wozniak. Steve Wozniak, for those who don't know him, is Apple's co-founder, so very iconic figure of our time. And he talked about leadership, Steve Wozniak. And he said this, this is a very great sentence that I, I love. He said, great leaders deliver on their promises. You are all leaders of change, and you need to deliver on that promise. So what did I do? I said, okay, it's a promise I'm making to myself. So I built in a system of people, of environments, which were going to lift me up and help me hold that promise. Because you know, I'm human too. Sometimes I get afraid. But because of that system, it told me, it held me accountable and really kept me on my way. That's how I managed to have the success that I have today. So here's the third principle. Build yourself a system which helps you to keep your promises. What's your system? Now, each and every one of you in this room has everything that it takes to be a leader of change. You have everything that it takes to go towards that fulfillment, that success that you're looking for. But one of the things I ask people always is, how bad? How bad is really your desire to success? Because if you find that hard purpose, that thing you need to hold on, if it's solid enough, I always tell people, whatever the level of fear, you will always find a way to defeat the fear of change. Thank you.